So transparency is pretty tough to do in video games while keeping it still performant. And in this talk, I wanna just really quickly go over three different ways that transparency can be approached and the pluses and minuses of what you're looking at. So two of these materials are really cheap and the third one is very expensive. And sometimes uh, people default to the more expensive options because they don't know other things are possible or they think that the results will look too poor for what they want to try to do. So we're gonna quickly just talk about these three different translucent materials, how they're set up, and when you might wanna use them in your game. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna leave full screen here, and we're gonna talk about them each one at a time. So the first material here is actually relatively cheap, and I'm gonna give it away really quick. So if you never knew this, you can always check the complexity of a shader by going to Lit, Optimization Views, and then Shader Complexity. As soon as we tick this on, it might need to compile for you, but what you can see here are three different materials with slightly different costs. And so how is this being measured? Well, obviously at the bottom, we can see we have a scale from good to extremely crappy. <laughs> and here what we can see in that bar are two little abbreviations, PS and VS. This stands for pixel shader and vertex shader. So the cost to make a shader basically are summed up by these two different shader functions. And some shaders don't need them, but a lot of things will still need pixel shader information on real. But you can see that between these three that we have slightly different configurations in terms of the pixel shader cost um, and then the vertex shader cost. So if I go back to uh, lit mode, you'll see that they fundamentally don't look that much different, but this could be a huge difference in terms of performance inside your games. So let's just break them down really quick. So the first one here, let me open this up. So I have this named as Cheap Glass 01, and I'm gonna drag this over just so we can see this setup. Okay, so a couple things off the top. The first thing is that the blend mode for this, most people when they think of translucent materials is translucency, right? Like go right there. But we're actually using an additive material. So what does that mean for this material? Well, what it means is that we have the image rendered. So think about this preview image behind, all the pixel colors. And what it's doing is it's only able to add color to the pixels on top. But because it's only adding the color on top and not having to do as much in terms of checking for the depth, this is always gonna be on top you basically save a ton of time and a lot of computation. And for a lot of cases, this can be good enough. Um, the other thing is that this is still uh, using the default lit shading model. If for some reason you were more in direct sun um, and you weren't really worried about it trying to look more like there's a shadow cast on it, an optimization for this to make it actually even faster is unlit. And you might think at first that that would um, look subpar, but I think you'd be pleasantly surprised that even changing this to uh, unlit and saving it doesn't really change too much about what we saw. Um, and it's a little hard to see. And maybe what I can do is pull this over here and just show you a kind of a before and after. But you can see here, if I kind of scrub around this, we're still catching those nice reflections. It still feels like it has a bit of a body to it. It still feels like there's, there's solidness there, but we're not paying too much of a cost. Um, and if I switch this back to default lit, hit save, and just watch what happens to our material inside the viewport in one second as Unreal thinks its way into the future. Always the best part about making video games. You can see we had a slight change in terms of it being able to pick up information. But again, if you're on a really tight budget, um, don't be afraid to um, play with unlit materials um, when it's in, let's say, full sun, where you're not getting a, a cast or it's not as important to the fidelity. So to break this down really fast, how we're achieving this, and again, um, is we're using a vertex uh, or reflection vector, excuse me. And this node is basically looking at the surface of the sphere. So like, let's say straight ahead. So the reflection vector comes straight back at us. But at the edge here, if you were to shoot a laser beam of it, the light would shoot off to the side, okay? So inherently, we're gonna kind of get this nice reflection model kind of for free in a sense. There's still some cost here. But what I've done is I've just plugged in the generic 
uh, desert texture and you would be able to just imply a bitmap here that is applying this based on this vector data. So we're kind of getting like a cheap kind of for now look, but you can think about it that way, right? Um, but we're using this kind of as a cube map that then I'm controlling how bright its influence is. And then what's happening is I'm having a base color that we could adjust like your window tint or for whatever reason, you had an object and you wanted it to be like green glass or something. You can just add this in right here. Um, and that'd be used for that. And if not, we can use the multiply for the emissive to kind of set up um, how bright it is. And then for the opacity overall, I'm just using a Fresnel shader with an exponent and a BRDF to just define how the Fresnel light effect happens. So it can be a little more opaque on the edges or anywhere it turns because the light is kind of getting trapped. And then I'm adding this overall opacity. This can show, this kind of adds like, if you imagine with a Fresnel, the middle is gonna be completely void. And so what we can do is we can just kind of like add up and make this more opaque. So that way we can get that kind of like body to the glass. Um, pull this aside for a second. The second one here, we kind of already gave it away with the optimization view shader model. This is a pretty standard setup that a lot of people do and I see. So if I go to cheap glass O2, it's kind of a lie, but it's just using translucency default lit, right? I have almost the exact same shader node network just for comparison. The only difference being that this actually um, also is influenced. So the reflection vector and everything's the same. The only difference being that we changed and added in uh, refraction. And this might be a little hard to see, but if I, if I go to the material here and I open this up and we go to the refraction, let me pull this over a little bit. Um, you can see in the viewport here, like we can get that nice little bit of extra distortion. But if you keep it kind of subtle, right? Like kind of how you would expect, it, it, it doesn't do that much for you. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't do something. And if you're really going for like highest fidelity possible, like you probably don't need to be watching this in the first place. But sometimes this isn't as important as you might think it is, you know, basically. So just want to put that out there. And then the last one, this third material here, the only difference between it and the first two, so let's open up that one, is this is actually using modulate and an unlit shader model. And again, it's basically the same thing. We take a reflection vector, pipe it into a cube map, adjust the brightness of it. So we multiply that to kind of ramp this up or down, add in a color, and then allow us to kind of, um, again, multiply it big, uh, based on the Fresnel to kind of add it in to get the emissive color. And I also am tinting the Fresnel a specific color. Let's say like you wanted it to kind of, there was a green light coming into your scene. This is like a way you could like tint the rim. So I did something a little bit different here, but I wanted to show you that this uh, shader was a little bit cheaper, but it does have a little bit of additional math in terms of adding a node to the Fresnel. But the difference between additive and modulate is that modulate is just multiplying these pixel colors on top of the final image. So additive and uh, additive and modulate are basically just addition and multiplication that are happening kind of post um, the image being completed. Whereas the translucent material has to actually calculate against the depth in the scene and it can be very expensive. So I hope this kind of gives you some ideas and ways to optimize your translucent materials inside of Unreal Engine. Um, it's something that some, seems hard to find at times. So if you like this content and you found it useful, um, the like button, like everybody says, uh, if you could click on it or subscribe to the channel, um, I hope to make more of these tips and little videos and things like that. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.